Hi, it's uh, Ricky of Mosh for Times here once again. Now, tonight, ladies and gentlemen, we have Glasgow Industrial Metalers Gunpoint X. Uh, we only have guitarist, vocalist, songwriter Rob from the band, as the rest are too camera shy, and it just means that we have free reign to take the mercury out of them. So it's been a wee while since I talked to you. I think it was, what, Thursday night? So how the devil are you, mate? I hope things are good. Very good, man. Um, I Others being camera shy. You tried drag us out on a Tuesday night, man. <laughs> Try and drag anybody on a Tuesday night, never mind a full band, you know what I mean? It's online. You can't tell me they've been in a scratch or all day. <laughs> but maybe they are. Maybe they are. Um, but obviously, one of the main reasons for this interview is that on October the 19th, you're coming to Glasgow uh, to play Moshville at Oktoberfest. And for the next six weeks, I'll be interviewing each band on the bill. So firstly, thanks so much for saying yes um, and also making the very long trip up to Glasgow to play. So I was just wondering, like, what number of bus are you getting to get to the venue? <laughs> Mate, I wish I could get the bus the, with the amount of props we've got. Um, sometimes it takes me days and fables from the venue to like get shit back home. So, man, I wouldn't mind getting a bus. But uh, <laughs> you you try getting two riot shields through Glasgow without raising attention. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I'll very Plus, much I remember up. actually um, after the headline gig we had the before we had the gun sign which we have the new it was like a a giant board that would light up via UV yeah and I can't remember what it was something was going down in Glasgow it might have been a fucking Celtic Rangers game I don't remember but it was a bit mental in town for a few days of okay. course I had to take the sign on the train didn't I I walked by two polis and they look at the sign they look at me and I was like oh god <laughs> like, they were alright about it, but I mean, it was all the fucking of all the corners, of all the times, of all the weekends to be, you know. Well, I mean, baby face yourself. You, 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 it's obvious that you're not looking for trouble or anything like that. So, um, I just told them I found it. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But let's talk about Gunpoint X. We will talk about Oktoberfest later on, um, as well as what else, uh, what other gigs you got planned for later on. But so, but I noticed that your DBP. Uh, entitled to Perfection of Human Error Remix, uh, was released in January of this year. So it contains songs from your demo recordings from 2022, but how did it feel to finally get it out there for the masses to hear after all this time, or after all the blood, sweat and tears that you put into the thing? Excellent question, man. I mean, I don't want to give the cliche answer. Um, obviously, the, no pun intended with the title, this is like the closest I think I've ever had to perfect, like to be in like, there's very little I can fault with that, and I'm highly critical, especially my own music. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, to get that out, I so we we the album, which we knew just kind of classes like very kind of rare demos, kind of picture book kind of thing. We the songs were fine. It's just the production I felt we could have done better. Um, I was going for a kind of early pitch shifter, um, kind of vibe like. Basically, sounds like shit, but I didn't. It didn't suit us. Yeah. So when we did a song for the next album, uh, Devastator, we were like, we tried a few things, we upgraded a few things. I went, oh right, okay. Um, and it just it was like night and day. So we then I said, I feel like we have to do this again, but this we're going to drop some songs in the set. So what's the point in doing them again? Yeah, we'll take we'll take the fat off the album, do the you know the core songs, remix them, and then because we have a new member in Damien, who's taking care of all the electronic parts, so I don't have to run about like a one man band. I was like, we can do this live now. So if we're going to do it, I want to throw in everything that we can pull off live. Yeah, and now you've got a more upgraded electronic industrial with the metal vibe. So to get that, just to let people hear that. Yeah, it was like thank fuck because it was in here for months, you know. Yeah, and then we have the tour happening and that kind of. I'm, I'm, I'm so glad we did it. Yeah, we didn't just, you know, sometimes they say, or oh, we just keep moving forward. But before we really become like a kind of brand in the UK, I wanted that to be the thing that people have when they talk about us. You know I mean? Yeah. So you mentioned like Damien there. Did you give him free reign to do exactly what he's wanted, or did you already say this is what it is? I just want you to play it, or did you give? Did he bring his own personal touches to the songs? So there's two two answers to that. The, the songs were all the songs were already done, right? And 
what was it Lars Ulrich said, when's a song done? A song's never really done. Because yeah. you update it over time, especially yeah. bands like Ministry, they go, they'll do a version live that's I've never really heard. I love that shit. Yeah. Um, with the EP, the songs were kind of, all the new elements were getting pushed in. And there was stuff that me and Damon had spoken about, but the core was there. Colin, our new guitarist, he actually came in a little. There was like kind of solos that get added or changed. That one was just quite a lot. I can't remember exactly what, but there was a slight touch. It was almost like you remember when uh, Phil Demo joined Machine Head. Yes. Through the Ashes Empires, through the Ashes Empires was kind of done, but you could definitely tell there was elements of Phil there. But it's when the next one came out, you could tell, oh, yeah. that's them yeah. now. Yeah. Hi. Is it fair to say that this is the happiest that you've been in the history of Gunpoint X? Well, being a Rob Doom, I can never say I'm truly happy, but, you know, I'm uh, less grumpy, if that helps. I'm going to get also you the, to laugh uh, before the end of this interview, I'll tell you. Um, I, I, I challenge you after the day of it. Um, <laughs> regardless to like, implement, we played, we've been playing a new song. Uh, live because when we came back, I was like, It's all good, fucking come back and playing songs about it. I was like, What if we gave them something new? And technically, Critical Pain Devastator is new, but something a song no one had heard except the band. Yeah, uh, we've been playing that, and that definitely is the first song where everybody has pitched in, and you can tell live. Yeah, uh, I can definitely feel it. Well. <laughs> I don't know whether you saw my question sheet before this interview because that is the song um, of uh, it's a personal favourite of mine. We talked about this a wee bit on Thursday, um, and we will talk about that song later on in the interview as well. But also with your use in social media, like um, uh, Bandcamp and things like that, and you can look at the analytics. It must be quite surprising sometimes finding out where people have listened to Gunpoint X. Um, I'm just wondering if you've got any like strange occurrences like somebody in South America has been listening to this industrial project in Glasgow. You know what I mean? They get some, they get some crazy things, some nice nice surprises, um, especially with like, I, I pay a little extra for like certain streaming platforms where you can really look. Yeah. Like, I know you can do it back up, but if you pay like certain things, you can tell how long someone's listened to it. Right. What's the most listened, you know, that kind of thing. Um, yeah. We... We kind of have like the, the top songs, you know what I mean? We have like our songs that we're always going to play or we always know that it's going to go well live. And we found out that Pain and Glory, which is the, not the opening track, but the first real track, is the most listened to on, I think it was Amazon. Okay. And I was like, wow, cool. I, that was just a song that came out when we promoted it, you know what I mean? Stuff yeah. like that. It's like, oh, it's a good wee surprise. Yeah. Um, and then you see like the views for a, a YouTube video that um, I don't necessarily like pay attention to that stuff, but we do get the emails through and stuff that we've not necessarily really pushed. Like, we've got an ambient song at the end of it, yeah. Um, that's quite popular, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> surprises like that, yeah. No, absolutely cool. And we talked about ambient as well. Um, I've, well, I've got a screensaver behind me, but half my CD collection is like a cryo chamber and, and cold meat industry stuff. So Ambient does have a close place to my heart. Um, but looking back on it, I know it was just released in January and things, but you probably had uh, ready maybe like a couple of months before and things like that. But looking back on it, would there be anything that you would like to revisit? Rather than the EP? Yeah. No, that's us. That's definitely Because remember, this is the revised... Yeah. Um. I mean, we can't speak for how the songs would maybe end up doing the line live, but regarding that, I mean, the, Omar, who remixed uh, Guns, so with the remix, it was like a, a bit of, it wasn't just giving it to a guy and he remixes it. We kind of redid the stems ourselves okay, and gave it to someone else to like basically fuck it up. And Omar was really interested in doing like a kind of, basically a fucked up version of Guns change the time signature, use the samples in a different kind of context. A yeah. band, a band uh, I fucking love, Brothers Outlaw. I've got a record of them record, uh, rehearsing it at the re rehearsal studio, and they did it like slow, country, like hillbilly vibes. It sounds fucking amazing. I'm like, maybe one day we'll get into 
doing that. You know, I mean, he'll do the main vocal. I'll just kind of sit at the back while I'm fucking beer and just me. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so it's got to be done. I mean, that's the thing. I mean, there's. There's so many projects out there at the moment. We talked about there's a, all you need is like a, a bedroom and modern software on your laptop, your PC, and that's you. You can record an album all by yourself. So you've got to do something unique and something a bit different to stand out. And that certainly sounds a bit different. Yeah, as so, long as you know what you're doing, mate, man. Yeah, yeah, any kid can whip up a song, but uh, as yeah. long as you know what you're doing, mate, yeah. Yeah, cool, cool, cool. Uh, but I informed you on Thursday as well that Critical pain devastator for me for my album number two to to be announced uh, was heavier than guns 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 um, from the EP remix um, and when I think when I said that to you you nearly ended the interview right there and then um, it's just it's the opening sec- section to like uh, devastator it's just the opening riff and every time it just when the drums come in that's me my neck spinning you know it's like it's do you know a picture like Joey Jordanson. Uh, playing that drum beat, you know. Yeah, I can see, I can see that context. I it just took me so by surprise because <laughs> you hear someone else's perspective. I'm like, really? Like to me, I always thought Guns was like the, I guess in a way, I devastated. I think it's hard for me to like think it that way. You know what I mean? All uh, I'm saying is that you better be playing that on October nineteenth. No pressure. Huh? No, absolutely no pressure. We're just um, going to do the ambient stuff, so. <laughs> to be fair, I would like that as well. I'm going to stay off the yeah, beer this time. <laughs> I'm going to stay off the beer this time. I think I got a wee bit carried away with myself, but it was my 50th last year, so I was a wee bit of... Um, I know you were complaining that people kept buying you drinks. I was like, but you did book it around your birthday, so it's kind of your own fault, you know what I mean? Yeah, well, th- thanks very much for your support. Um. But yeah, it's like what I also liked about uh, what I like about your songs is that um, you pretty much play a track that's completely influenced by Ministry, and then you completely then you play another track and it's completely influenced by Nine Inch Nails, um, and then you play another track and it's completely influenced by like Machine Head as well. It's not something that you kind of intermix. It's just something that you keep separate, and it's something that I like about your music. Uh, I've been listening to it for the last hour and a half, pretty much solid. So, um, yeah, you've got that's kind of the direction. I mean, but when you're in a band, you kind of have to find your thing. I found it in my old band, we found our thing, and yeah. then we found our thing here. At least maybe in 10 years, it'll be different, but it's not intentional, it's just a very, very open minded way of writing. What have we got? This beat, this thing. It doesn't start with like, oh, we should let's just make every song, you know, sound like this guy. It's never like that because we have elements, but we don't actually sound like that band, yeah. Kind of thing. So, like, it's it's been very open minded to like anything that's going to come. So, like, the next album, there's a song, and I just couldn't, I was like, that's not a solo to me, it's a saxophone. And I was like, I, I just kind of get it with me, it has to be a saxophone. There's bagpipes, you know what I mean? There's all these different things. It just makes that song what it is, hence the mix names. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's not just the yeah. song title. Well, we are going to talk about the mix names in a wee minute as well. Um, but So is it just a case of like whenever you're in the house, you're picking up the guitar or you're programming something, or do you guys meet up um, quite frequently and you just jam things? How does it all come about? Um, so there's different ways, but generally it'll be like, I'll whip up a demo. I'll include, include like drum programming. So it might be this current state of gunpoint X, so that'll be something I've got. Or like just literally yesterday I was start started making a demo for something uh, Colin sent me. Yeah. Absolute beastly a riff. Um so Colin uh, sent this to you. Yeah, yeah. Colin's had this riff for a while and because we've been so busy, like, but I eventually got rid of yeah. it last night and it was like and putting it together, it was like a mix of Fear Factory and Cold Chamber. Yeah, okay. It's just the way it was going. I'm like, oh, that'd be so cool with that, this, this, and that. And then what usually happens is send a demo through, and then we meet up at rehearsal. I'm like, here's, let's get through this. And then that's when the song starts to become like the beast that is live because you play it with other people. It, it sometimes doesn't feel right, or something much better comes around it, especially yeah. when it comes to like playing with a human drummer. That yeah. kind of thing, or like, ah, oh, the bridge is too long, the bridge is not long enough, you know what I mean? Just being in that room, then it's done. 
You know, we don't sit about uh, jamming, bro, or any of that stuff, man. It's just no us. Yeah, yeah. Do you? Is that Miss Sugar? Is that Miss Sugar at the back in your backdrop? No, Miss Sugar. The... Your... No, it's not. I thought it was a guy from Miss Sugar because I was going to say that was a good reference because Miss Sugar did something somewhat similar. Yeah, you know I mean? yeah. Now that's a uh, Kieran from um, Death Collector. So, um... apologies, Kieran. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, do you do you invite? It sounds as if you do the majority of the song writing. Do you invite that pressure on yourself? Are you quite happy to deal with that pressure, or would you like the band members to like contribute more? Are you open to that, or are you quite? I'll do ninety percent of it. You add your touches here and there. So, when I'll get, I'll give you what what we spoke about when Colin and Damien joined. I will do the majority of the music because I have a very very high standard of what gets in, what yeah. gets to people's ears. Yeah. There's the stuff, there's the stuff we work on, there's the stuff to get to it, and then there's the stuff that even the band members will never hear because I'm like, that's shit, that won't work. I've always said, if you have an idea for a song or contribute a part, tell me, bring it up, and we'll work on it. If it doesn't yeah. work, it doesn't work. Yeah. But it's going to get written anyway, so it's best you speak up. But I've always said, and I said this to the band at the band meeting, I don't care who contributes. Like, sometimes Michelle, my partner, has come in with an idea and I'm like, fuck, I never even thought of that. So Michelle gets the credit. I always said as well, if we're, God forbid, sitting about jamming and we kind of get apart, right? Yeah. See the guy who was cleaning the toilet, sticks his head in and goes, why don't you try blah, blah, blah? And it's the best idea in the room. Well, then that gets what then that guy gets the credit, right? Do okay. you know what I mean? Yeah, you can't have enough ideas as long as it's the best part for that song. It's all about yeah. the music. A lot yeah. of people say that, but they don't necessarily fucking mean it. Yeah, <laughs> very true, very true. But you talked about new members then. So, how easy or difficult was it to find the new members? Tell us who they are, um, and yeah, what they're bringing to Gunpoint X then. So, um, Damien has I've known Damien actually probably a year more than that. Damien was actually posting about uh, forming a Nine Inch Nails tribute in Glasgow. Okay. Caught my eye because it's like one of my yeah. favourite bands ever. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. I'm not really wanting to do the tribute thing. I'm busy enough with the Gunpoint X. But I was like, if this guy is willing to try that, he must know his shit. Um, so... I messaged and I was like, hey man, I saw this. I uh, love fucking Nine Inch Nails. We could meet up, we could talk about Nine Inch Nails 90% of the time, or we could talk about this. And Damien was interested. That time he had a, a lot of fucking shit going on, like he just sort of flat suit and moving and all that stuff. So like, and he was like, yeah. I'm interested, but just give me some time. I went, cool. And time I gave him. And it was a few months later. And then at the same time, we were looking for a new guitarist. And I've known Colin for a few years not like close but I, I met him years ago it was actually I don't know if you saw on our page uh, I was playing Built for Sin in 2019 maybe and okay. Colin's in the crowd <laughs> and he's got a beer and he's having a good time and now uh, there's a video of Colin playing Built for Sin a month ago in Ivory's <laughs> um, so it we spoke about it, I mean, calling me up and then had a good chat and then we all met up as a band and you ever just, like, you must get that with Moshville that sometimes you just get something, you're like, this is this is going to be brilliant, this is, yes. I can't wait for this. Like, I remember getting him, it, go, it was that good and I was like, I'm going to get him the route because if I don't, I'm going to end up fucking in you know, <laughs> the guys or something like, <laughs> and just, it was such a good vibe. And I've always said, being in this band is 50% about your attitude, you know? Yeah. And 50% is about the actual being able to play the stuff. If your attitude's good, you're half in the band, and it has to be a good vibe. Walk in the room, the rest of them, you're not dreading it. If there's somebody's drama on this side, just walk in and it's like, yes, here we fucking go. <laughs> Playing the music is a fucking joy, and after that and want to get to the first gig it's just all about the vibe because I'm in a position where I'm just I can't be asked for these fucking time wasters I can't be asked for these 
John McLean as a kid. It's just you get to the points that are enough. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So at the end of the day, they've settled in very well. Like I said earlier on, the happiest that you've ever been. Um, yeah, so, but now that uh, some of the material itself is a few years old and, um, and no doubt you're sick of playing most of it live, so what have you guys been up to writing uh, since then? Um, and what would you say um, are the subtle differences in the music since the last album then? Um, the, there's basically an album sitting there waiting for a band to play it. And then that's when everybody's ideas will start coming in. Two of them, three of them are actually Critical Pain, Devastator, as you mentioned. We take the Wounds, which is more ambient kind of thing. And then there's the one that we've been playing live. Um, I think it's just more different elements. There's, I think there's like three instrumentals because I was like, there's just no place for vocals in this. This is perfect. Yeah. They mentioned the saxophone, the bagpipes, <laughs> um, ridiculous samples. It's just like, I think maybe it's like bigger songs. Um, a very, the darkest party album you could imagine. Yeah. Yeah. And going back to the recording, um, how was the recording for you? I mean, did it take you a good number of like goes before you were happy with the performances? Were a song was there? A, did you did it just was it plain sailing for you, or was there a song that you just had to go over again and again and again before you were fully satisfied? Um, so regarding the EP, because it's it's the fresh one. Yeah. Um, I think you said at the start of the interview, and I actually laughed at it. Um, about the blood, sweat, and tears. This was fairly painless, I'll be honest. Yeah. I don't really fuck about, man. Like, my vocals will be done in about, we can ask anybody who's recorded them, done in 20 minutes, and that's including overlays. Yeah. I, I, per song, it's like, it was, I don't fuck about. I pretty much played most of the guitar on this EP. Steve, the bass player, did a, a quite a bit as well, but it was mostly me. You can ask him because he was the one recording me. Two takes, maybe. Then all the fun stuff, the overdubs. The samples, the electronics, the programming, I basically happily sit by myself and just spend ages on that. Yeah. Not because it's difficult to do is because I really enjoy it and I, I don't stop until it either makes me go, ah, oh, or I burst out laughing. Well, you know I mean? don't go into the samples too much because I am bringing it up in pretty much the next question. But it's good to hear, it's good to see that um, recording for you is like a, a, a seamless uh, process it's just a case of like you demo it and you demo it to death so when it goes into the studio to get it done it's just well, exactly Aye, our, our demos kind of Frankenstein into the, the finished version yeah um, yeah and it is a fairly painless process um, but that's I mean that's taking a while it's taking a lot of recordings to get to that point yeah um, I think that I think the only stressful part for me is the mixing I'll maybe come in at the end when a mix is being done, because it's like, when I hear it get manipulated, and ch- I can't deal with it, man. Because it's like getting somebody you're kidding, and they put, start changing the wicket, and you're like, oh my God, I can't deal with it. I'd rather like hear it, give feedback, yeah. hear it, give feedback, then come in right at the end for the final touches. Again, because sometimes mixing, my God. You know, the demo sometimes sounds the way I want it to sound. Yeah, but I want it to sound better, and it sounds different, and it's just like, man, fuck. You start <laughs> checking the time, because you only booked into 10. Fuck that, man, you know what I mean? <laughs> so who did you get to mix it for you? Um, so th- the plan. On this EP, we had someone different mix every song, except Omar, who I mentioned earlier, he did Shockwave and Guns, um, because Guns, I could imagine, was easy to mix. And Shockwave had like 47 stems. Yeah. Um, and he, Omar mixes a lot of prog, so I thought he could handle that. The plan for the next album is a different mixer for every song, because again, it's going to be so many different flavors. I was actually talking to a guy yesterday who I won't mention yet, but we were talking about that, and I was like, that'd be fucking excellent, man, if we could get you a... Well, again, I, I don't know how many times I have to repeat myself. So you talk too much, right? It's as if, like I said, you have read my yes. bloody, read my bloody questions. Um, but 
I've asked Jason of Ingested and I've asked Chris of Party Can in this question. Was there ever a time in the uh, Gunpoint X history then this isn't going to happen? Um, I just feel like disbanding the band is is getting me down. I just feel like chucking it. Or was the motivation always there? Or were the times where you just felt down in the dumps about it all? The only time I ever feel like that is when I've done too much. And I've, I've learned, I'm still learning, actually. I'm much better at not burning myself out. Yeah. Because um, I put a lot of time in it. And the reason I put a lot of time in it is because I believe it's worth it. Um, that's maybe something. Believe it's worth it or you need it to be perfect? I, it's impossible to be perfect. You're never going to, because I've seen guys like that as well in other bands and like, they're kind of OCD about it. I want it to be as good as possible, but then you've seen us live, man. It's a fucking riot, you know? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. No, I think the only time I ever get like that is when I've maybe done too much, but I'm getting much better at that. And knowing when to stop and go back to the next day. So you know when to stop and go back to the next day, but you just literally stopped 20 minutes before this interview started then. So have you really learned? Well, yeah, because I stopped. Otherwise, I'd be mixing while you were... <laughs> uh, good stuff. Yeah, but uh, go back to the EP. We have to talk about the samples. Um I mean, in music, uh, I mean, I obviously, I you know, that I listen to a lot of, like, brutal stuff, uh, death metal and all the rest, but I, I love the use of samples, whether it be, like, serial killers or horror films or just all-out weird comments. Just keep them coming in with Gunpoint X as well. But do you, in your spare time, do you watch weird slasher films or do you watch Fulci and um, you hear something and then you just got to write it down and you come back to it later on? You love doing that shit? Yeah, all that stuff. I mean, um, I don't necessarily sit and listen for it but i definitely have like a kind of an ear open and um, sometimes i'll hear things sometimes somebody will say something funny to me and i'll be like that would be funny so i have to make the sample right does that okay. make sense yeah i so like there's one i can't really mention it but there's one in the next album it's like that would be so funny if we use that voice as a sample so i record that and it doesn't technically exist you can't find it anywhere yeah that can think it's perfect for that song um yeah Little sound bites, even little noises, just perfect. You know I mean, just one little reference that nobody would ever get. Yeah. So it's like a big end joke, you know what I mean? <laughs> but I also want ex and, uh, a few exclusives, right? Um, I also have to talk about the EP remix song titles. So first of all, uh, why have you went down this route of giving it exotic song titles? And then I'm going to give you a couple of those song titles and you're going to explain to them what they mean. So why did you go down this route of like... Um... Okay, so the, 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 when you first see the song title, that is like your standard. This is what the song's called. You know what I mean? Because you have to do that. Um, but then the mix name came about. So like when we started remixing, I was like, I'm going to call this like the, what was the Wounds one called of the album? Exposure mix, because I felt like I was exposing things that I wasn't necessarily comfortable with. It's quite open, that song, so I thought Exposure is the perfect mix name for that. So it's like uh, how the song's going to feel, it's like a flavour or a hint towards what it's about. Yeah. And every song's going to have that, because sometimes we'll have different versions of that song, and that mix name will change, but the actual song title stays the same. But I can just uh, being the vocalist then when you're announcing the the songs live, we're going to say we're going to play guns, 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 BFG mix. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it'd be funny if I did that as a sample, wouldn't it? This is guns, 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 BFG mix. Oh. <laughs> Give me ideas, man, because it'll probably happen. Well, I've got. I think it will. I think it will. But yes. Um, it's like you mentioned one there. What's the ballad? It's it's just popped in my head. What's the kind of like ballad where you're like clean singing? Was it off the demo? Was it off the demo? Yeah. Uh, you definitely done a song. Oh, no, no, it was off the remix, and it was definitely clean singing. Was it the fifth song? It's, it's annoying me. It's annoying me. But I didn't know that you had. You've also obviously got your aggressive vocals, but you've obviously got your clean singing as well. Yeah. Yeah. So who's the, by doing it. so <laughs> so who's uh, we know we can roughly guess who your rough vocals are, but do you have like clean vocal influences? Yeah, um, again, it's not so much maybe an influence, but it's definitely just 
that part would be cool if I did this. And sometimes, again, I take my ego out of it. It doesn't always have to be me. So there's parts where there's female vocals because I've tried it and it yeah. sucked. So I'd be like, that's definitely a female. So I'll ask, uh, quite a few times I've asked Michelle the Splinter Halo and she's fucking, it's like goosebumps, man. Like every, it's still now when I hear it. Like sometimes we have to sample it because Michelle's not there. Um, on the album coming up, I have a couple of guests. Um, yeah, it's, it's just that I, I can sing clean, but sometimes it's just not my part. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You mentioned uh, Splinter Taylor there and talking about Kieran. Um, he witnessed them down in uh, Shrewsbury. Um, and he was like... Small world. Yeah, absolutely. And he was like, uh, wow. Um, taking pictures of them and all the rest of it, put it up on social media, spreading the word about them. So uh, yeah, I think they've got like almost 7,000 followers as well. So they're... Uh, they've, done, and... they've done really well that last tour, man. Obviously, I'll get like first-hand knowledge. Um, they're, they are the... Queens of merch, my God, they they were selling like, I mean, at an independent level, you kind of know how it goes. If you're like con and pe people are buying your shit before you go on stage, they were selling t-shirts and albums before they even like, like went on. And I'm like, that's amazing, man. You know what I mean? That for an independent band, yeah, they've been doing it a while. Like, I think Evelyn's been gigging as long as me, yeah. Um, but she's maybe not as grumpy as me. Remember, this has been recorded and it will go online. Um, I so go to them, I think. I feel <laughs> I'll probably see you like on October the 19th with a black eye, and then I'll know exactly what's happened. Um, it's the makeup man, so <laughs> good stuff. Thanks, Rob. Thanks for that. But carrying on with the samples, then there's a couple that I've, if it's already with your self to explain their meaning. Um, control alt deceased. Um, and you're trying to be cute here with having the letter E in deceased with the number three. So uh, what would you say? Is that just putting something to bed? The song title? That's a reference. That's a reference to another band. Surprised yeah. no one else noticed it. Is it? Yeah, fairly recent band. Um, surprised no one else noticed it. It was a, a wee kind of shout out to them. That was the name of that mix. Well. Any guesses? Give me a clue. Let's talk. Oh, for fuck. That narrows it down. <laughs> uh, no, you're going to have to I give it. When, I think when people get this one, when they hear this interview, they'll actually notice, I actually read the thing, like you did. Do you remember a band called Extort? Oh, well, yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yes, that was a fucking great song title, and then I was like, you know what, that's actually perfect uh, for a mix name, and I'll give a wee shout out, and I think I tagged them in one of the thumbnails. <laughs> no, it's these things. You know what I mean, everybody's like, you know, shout out to the bands, but no one actually notices when people do it. Yeah, I mean, I was a judge to metal to the masses for them, and. Um... I mean, we talked for like 25, 30 minutes, so five or six judges, and we all said extort. Um, Volcano X was so friggin' close. Um, oh, man. Extort. Yeah. Wow. They had an extort, opportunity. Great, they were a great band, man. Volcano X, man, like, we nearly went on tour with them. Yeah. Um, that was getting discussed after, probably during lockdown and just after. Um, then we went different ways, but it was because they had the whole X thing. What yeah, I call it like the Revenge of the Exes tour or something like that. You know what I mean? Just like, <laughs> um, and it would work out. Yeah, yeah. And the last one, reject all or reject for all or whatever like that. So what one's that then? What's that some reference to? Uh, and it's so be, I can just... be cute when you've got the three for E and four for A. You know, you're just trying to yeah, be cute. It's, it's edgy, mate. It's just edges. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, that's just a... General hatred, hatred, not necessarily for social media, but the people who use it. Uh, if you listen to that song, you can, it would be hard to figure that one out. Um, yeah. And it's also just, I do laugh every time I go on a website the first time and it comes up about the cookies. I'm like, reject all. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. You know I mean? So that was appropriate for that, that song. Yeah, quite right, quite right. 
Um, we, we kind of talked this uh, about this a wee bit earlier. Um, for those that are eagerly awaiting the new material then and the new album specifically that you told about, how would you say it compares to your early material? And do you think you found the sound that you've been looking for with this new material? It's quite interesting when you say this is Gunpoint X, this is exactly the sound I want it to be. But how can you replicate that without keeping the listeners interested and adding subtle, subtle differences that may take you away from that sound that you... Yeah, previous so just question. Are we, as a wee side note, you know, I always think it's funny when bands say, oh, you, you're, your next album needs to be better than the one before it. See, if you make like 10 albums, does that mean your first one suck? I never understood that. It's like, you can only do the best you can. You know what I mean? Yeah. We've all yeah. had bum tracks, we've all had wee bits that were like, no one necessarily, you know, I always find that bizarre. Anyway, I think we, I... Do you know what I see is, like, sorry, to see on that point there, I hate it when bands progress. I don't want them to progress. So if you're telling me that's yeah. your best album, then just do 10 songs of exactly the same, because it's the same with Death Metal, Cause of Death. They then went on to then complete, and then it just completely, obviously just completely lost it to me after album number two, because they progressed as musicians. Don't progress. <laughs> Stay the same. Um, but you can say that with so many albums and stuff like that. But So why... Are you worried about the subtle changes that you're putting in? I don't really give a shit. Um, the I think what the thing is, it's just being like every song does have a different, like this EP has a different flavour. It has a different feel. It's almost like a, it's so different, but all under the Gunpoint X umbrella. I think the album would be that, but just more expanded. You know, there yeah. will be the industrial parts, there'll be the metal parts, there'll be techno parts, there'll be ambient parts, the electronic parts, the prog parts. The heavy vocals, clean vocals, whatever's good for that song. So when you listen to that to start to finish, it's just like, what the fuck? You know what I mean? It's like like I said to you before about the compilation thing. We yeah. make compilations under the Gunpoint X name. Yeah. And you keep and you keep, you do EPs, right? But there's seven songs, EPs. Why not just do another one? And um just make an another album. Another EP. Yeah, I make an album. <laughs> yeah, that... I know. I mean, I kinda get it. I mean it is Depends on the collection of songs you have at the time. I mean, every band's different. I don't think any other song would have fitted in this EP for us. Whereas the next one, I'm like, I can just feel it's a compilation album. I, I just couldn't imagine any of the songs waiting even longer to come out. It's like, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Has anything changed within you with this album then, has it? Well, you've described a lot of different genres and stuff like that. If you're writing ambient, then there must have been like times when your your mood was calm, your everything was good with the world, but then you've got the metal parts where you're like you're pissed off with things and you're making the, the guitars sound angrier. So is it just a case of more um gunpoint X and gunpoint X? I mean without being like a, a, a kind of cliche answer, it's really to do with the song itself, not necessarily the mood. Yeah. Um, if I start hitting notes in the keyboard and I can feel something, sometimes that becomes devastating, but sometimes it becomes ambient. It's nothing to do with mood. It's like, oh, that'd be really good. Yeah. When did that? It was good if it did that, you know? Yeah. It just kind of goes that way. On that note, like, I mean, I was telling you about, we were just talking about like band sale, we want to progress and the next album has to be better than the next album. It's the, the heavy vocal as well. It's like, when it comes to like vocals and like like guns and stuff like that, it's quite aggressive. I'm I get pissed off. It's almost like you know, I think that metal vocal aggressive is a genre itself now. Yeah. Like I wonder what they're so annoyed about because <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's almost like I have to sing like this because the what they're actually singing doesn't make any sense. You know what I mean? Yeah. I always wonder that. It's like I'm in a metal band, therefore I have to. No, you don't. <laughs> sing whatever is metal sounds best. You know, I'm finding it difficult to argue with you when you're probably like that. To be fair, um, you know, is in my head, man. <laughs> but there anything about the way that um you've recorded previous material that you're now going to take with a new album that you'll continue to use and have a settled formula, or you're quite open to finding new studios experiences, or do you think you've got that formula that you're happy with and you'll stick with it for now? The thing that both definitely the formula that we have. And but like I say, we have a different mix of for every song. I also say, for instance, uh, Ryan from Witch of the Veil, he did pick the wounds, he mixed that and mastered it for us. I'm using this example because he 
would back him up when I said to him, if you have any ideas, man, fucking throw them in. I'd love to hear them. I want, like I said, everybody's idea. So yeah. when you've got different guys, every song I get a different mix for a reason. You know, um, that guy would be perfect for that. that uh, Kerry for Halo did, uh, we call it Sweden, but it's uh, user unfriendly on the AP. And she'd be perfect for that because of this kind of the vibe of it. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, if you hear anything when you're mixing it, you're like, oh, I've had this idea, fucking throw it in. You know what I mean? I'd love to hear it. Most of the time it works. Well, I was going to say, you what happens if you get it back and you're like, what the fuck was that? There's been a couple of times on it, and I've very politely had to explain, <laughs> and maybe not so much that. But the danger with throwing that stuff in is it's like, oh, what if? <laughs> and it changes the whole, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So what about, um, especially with the, the release of the remix EP at the beginning of the year, and um, a lot of people know that you're in the process of looking into the new album. Has there been any kind of label interest, or are you quite happy to do everything yourself? You know how it works. You're quite happy to be your own boss. You'll take your own time, have your own pressures, and do it your own way, or would you like that backing from a label? Open to... You know, I'd be daft not to be open to that kind of offer, but I'm I'm very, very grounded in that way. I remember yeah. uh, years ago, my old band, we, got a, we went down to Manchester and we had a label meeting and all that, and we just didn't feel right about it. And we turned it down. Six months later, they went out of business. So, you know, how fucked would it have been then? Yeah. But we're in a place where it's like, quite happily, then or anything, we don't have to answer anybody. You know, I remember, uh, you know, people talk about making it, but to me, if you're in a position where you can play where you want, when you want, play what you want, do what the fuck you want, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. But if there's other offers that come in to make that the next step, definitely open to it. But to what I've seen, everybody has got a manager and everybody has a record label and then that band gets bumped up the bill. But then you actually look at the label and it's some kid who sits in his basement <laughs> and what you actually have is a guy who maybe does your distribution or he just hits the share button on Facebook every time he's post something. Yeah. And then he's moaning about each other on separate accounts. Yeah. So labels are few and far between. I think it's pretty was it nuclear blast that's left. Um Eric. Oh, they might even be off. one the same. You know what I mean? It's all it's all changed, man. Um, but you generally find that what I've seen, it's usually one guy. You know, and I'm not saying you can't help, but let's let's use the the word signed very loosely. It's like I, I hate the term unsigned. Yeah, that to me is like unemployed. It's like no, it's yeah. like fuck. We're you know what I mean, it's like I and yeah, independent. I say that on stage. I was like, shout out to all the independent bands because we yeah. do all our fucking sales. We do all the work. Unsigned like makes the uneducated person go all right. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, fucking uh, Oasis was unsigned and King Tut's so what the fuck happened, do you know what I mean? Exactly, exactly. Um, you just put me off there by mentioning Oasis. I did have a line of thought with what I was going to ask you a question, but never mind. But we'll go to the lyrics. So with you being the main vocalist um, of the band, do you write all the lyrics or do all members contribute to the lyrics? And what type of lyricist are you? Do you open the door, you see something in the street, you take a note of it in the pad and pen, you come back to it later on, do you watch a lot of documentaries, do you watch a lot of films, do you read a lot of books? Where do you get your inspiration from for your songs? In regards to the piss off part, like all I have to do is walk down the street, man. Aye. And I get I get pretty fired up. All you have to do is walk down the street and the fucking idiot in front of you kind of walk in a straight line. <laughs> the guy before you at the cash machine has never clearly used a fucking credit card or something before. That stuff just <laughs> aggravates and that gets... That aggressive vocal for me, it's not just putting it on. In regards to the lyrics, yep, I'll do most of them. Anybody can chip in. Yeah. Anybody's got a cool word, anybody thinks, oh, I thought you were singing that, and I'll go, no, but that's actually better. Change it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Make it better. It's all about that part being the best. Yeah. Now, um, um, you don't get a wee bit moody or personal when somebody changes anything about it. As long as you feel that improves it, then it's in. If it's, I don't. Don't care if it makes it sound cooler. Absolutely, fire in. Talking about samples, see that poster behind you, the crow. You ever used the one "fire it up, fire it up" from the film? 
No, I, I forgot about that. That's I. Yeah, there was. I did actually sample the the, the one after it, the City of Angels. Was yeah, I was a wee bit disappointed with that for obvious reasons, but yeah. But I mean, if you make the perfect movie, anything after that's going to be, you know, I like was saying that if the Crow Two came out by itself, it would have been like, oh my god, you know, yeah, because the Crow the first one was so perfect, yeah, you know. But um, the Iggy Pop scene in the sequel was hilarious, man. It was struck like, <laughs> yeah, five girls. <laughs> Um, but talking about your lyrics, though, I do have to worry on a couple of occasions. Um, on Guns, you wrote the lyric, went to the gun shop just the other day. Is that reflecting on true offence? It's a reference to a very famous artist slash song. I just manipulated the actual words, the terminology, but it's uh, yeah. a very famous song. Only one person. Only two people can. Just saying that because this is recorded. Or did you actually go to the gun shop? We want to go. Victor <laughs> Morris is gone, so... Yeah. <laughs> the other um, one was... Uh-huh. John, John the drummer's the only one to recall it. He, he said that, and I was like, you know that? He's like, yeah, yeah. No one else, like... And people sang along with it, and they still don't quite go uh, exactly what I'm referring to. Yeah, the other line at the beginning was seven hours, 15 days. It was just strange mm-hmm. the way that was worded as well, so... Yeah, yeah. there's a very particular... Yeah, those numbers mean something. Um, yeah. Fair so but on, on Critical Pain as well, you write... Um, critical Pain, Devastator, you write, um, no god of yours will be my saviour. So I'm just wondering if you're into death metal, perchance. You know, I like death metal, but I wouldn't... Uh, I don't wake and bake kind of thing, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, it's just a... Uh, when I, when, I, when I was watching a lyric video and stuff like that, which we're going to talk about in a wee um, second, and the, the lyrics came up, and I was like, oh, okay, um, this is a different Rob than I know, a wee bit blasphemous there. Um, but I welcome yeah. it, welcome it. <laughs> um, but Just yeah. Put on a t-shirt, can I it? Yeah. <laughs> But talking about the visual side of the albums, you guys are not also shy uh, when it comes to releasing music video- videos. Um, I mean, you from album two to be announced or whatever, it's called TBA, whatever, you release videos for both songs, Critical Pain, Devastate and Pick the Wounds. Um, am I right in saying, though, from the EP you just released uh, Guns, Guns, Guns? That's from the EP, aye. Yeah. So is that the end of the visual cycle? Um, from the EP then, or do you see yourself doing another one before no, another no, no, album comes out? No, I see that was done, definitely on the, the, the new song, the new songs. Um, Pick the Winds is the one with the clean vocal, you were referring to earlier. Yeah. Uh, me and Michelle did that. No, um, that's definitely done. I, as soon as that EP was released, that was it. Moved on. Yeah. Because um, I was already moved on, but I had to wait and get printed and distributed. All that stuff was already over here. Yeah, so, yeah, different timeline. So again, being independent in DIY or die, then do you do the videos yourselves, or um, do you get somebody you give you get somebody else to do it for you, and there's a bit of turn and fro in, until you get the final product? Um, pretty much, I pretty much do. I'm trying to remember where that's released. I pretty much do it myself. Michelle's really good at coming in and making the. I'm really good with like the, the concept and the editing. Like start to finish, Michelle's really good at coming in and adding the uh, textures. If that makes sense, you know. Yeah. You know, everything looks the way it does. She like, I'm actually underrated. It's fucking amazing. She made the wounds video look the way it does. Um, I ourselves, um, I actually spoke to a couple of guys in Manchester who were um, who do that kind of thing, and I was like, right, this is our stuff. But I'm at the moment really done with the performance video. Yeah, I find it quite boring. Um, way overdone. Just me personally. Um, because I've done them myself, and it was fun. But I, 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 if a song came up and I'm like, no, that definitely needs a band. You know, I contradicted myself. But I don't see it happening anytime soon. Our past mm-hmm. videos for like the past two years have all been like visual rather than performance. You know, yeah, depending on the song. Yeah. I've only got a couple of questions for you. I really do thank you for your time that you've taken out tonight, mate. Um, 
But where can we find everything for uh, Gunpoint X? What socials are you on? Where can we find you? Um, I, I don't think there's are the physical copies of um, things available. Yeah, EP. Yep, is out. Um, get it. Um, get it missing records. Actually, there you go. Because I noticed um, in Bandcamp, for example, it's just you can only buy the digital album. So I thought it would I, be some. Uh, you can get the physical on our big cartel um, band camps to download or the streaming, Spotify, all the usual stuff. I actually just wrapped up the TikTok with the actually. Uh, I was getting a bit stubborn about it, but you have to kind of go with it or go against it. Um, but I use TikTok for artistic purposes, you know? Yeah. Not so much... Uh, this is as it rehearsal. Ah, oh, crap. It's like um, artistic. You go through it and you can see it's either promoting something or it's a visual representation of a song that's coming out. It's not other stuff. Do you find the reach so much better than other social media platforms with TikTok? That's the, that's the current thing, man. It's like it doesn't even relate to music, it goes to society. People are just like sheep. They'll go through one thing and then they'll over consume it and then they'll move to another thing. So TikTok's the same people, it's just they've moved onto this and then the kind of older generation have caught up with Facebook so they know how to share videos and do Facebook yeah. stories, but all the kids are already are here and then in ten years every mum and dad will have TikTok and we'll be, you know, doing VR. Yeah. 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 I to answer your question, you type in gunpoint X, it's no hard to find. The only other thing close to it is gunpoint and he's a rapper. So hopefully he doesn't assume me. Yeah, that's I don't a have any money anyway. So. Yeah. Couple of sort of differences, but I've just got a, a wee fun question and then um, a serious question. Um, you're, you you've got a ther- you've got a forty minute set list. You've got six to eight songs. What's the one song of the set list that you're looking forward to playing the most, and why? So you might have uh, it may be fifth on the set list, for example, but it's the one that you really really cannot wait to play. What is it, and why? Two answers. One is there's a slightly longer version of one of the songs in the EP. It's live. I always look forward to that. It's yeah. kind of like, you know, when something up plays Spit It Out and then you see Spit It Out live. Yeah. It, it, yeah. And then but the actual answer would be the new song. I'm always about the, the new song coming out and it's like, you know, it's like a release. Yeah. Yeah. Well... Looking forward to hearing the new song again. And um, yeah, you better still p- play Critical Pain. But this is the time where um, musicians just love to talk about themselves um, because I ask um, what were the make and models of the instruments that they, uh, they play with, um, whether it's live or whether it was just for the recording the album, depending on what stage we're at. So you're going to be playing uh, the gig on October the 19th, for example. What's going to be your setup? Making models. So I don't necessarily. I, I like to keep a. <clears throat> I, I mean, I can tell you that Colin definitely uses a Jackson. He's got that nineteen ninety six fucking Japanese thing. I forget the model. It. I play guitar, but when I class myself as a guitar guy, I don't like to give our secrets away. But we do have the standard metal setup with samples, electronics, drum triggers. Strobe lights, anybody who's into like Fear Factory, Ministry, Ramstein, you kind of get the idea. Yeah. And um, wouldn't necessarily go into everything we use recording this and that because I've got a few secrets there that cost me enough. Um, I, I'm, if you imagine a metal band with like fucking massive electronic elements, I think I said somebody once if Gary Newman, I wish I was as good as Gary Newman, but if Gary Newman was a metal band. Yeah. Yeah, no, fair play, mate, fair play. Um, but yes, this the final thing. You've always got uh, Oktoberfest and October the 19th. What other th- gigs have you got coming up then? Where are you playing? What are you doing before the end of the year? So we just had our return gig um, of the upgrade. Um, so we have a full tour based on your lovely self. Um, we're doing Rebellion, Manchester, and the Garage London. How, what day is this? So I think it's like in a week, something like that, hence we've been so busy. Um, then we're doing Washville, like you said, in the 19th. Then we're going back down to Newcastle, Benny Cook Little Buildings. Yeah. Um, on the 8th of November. Then we're going back down again to say, the, the one on the posters fell apart, I had to get that sorted again. 
the day. So we're now playing the shed in Leicester. Okay. Then the day after, little plug out to spreading the disease. And we're doing a gig swap. So we're going down to Kent, um, yeah, which so is about as far as you can go in the island without swimming um, with spreading the disease. And that's on the 23rd of November. Yeah. There are good guys there coming up here in September sometime, mid uh, mid September the twelfth or something. So I will be. We'll uh, be there. We, we actually uh, that was all point in the gig swap because I says are going to commit to to in Moshville, and yeah. you know I didn't want to do a world tour at Glasgow. Um, <laughs> so I uh, so we'll be there. We just won't be actually playing just to support them, that, and then we'll go down and play them in November. So who's the bands that you're playing with then at uh, Manchester and London? So we're, the headliner is the uh, Suicide Commando, um, Nightmare Preconceived, I fucking love. I don't know if you've ever seen them. No. And Mechanical Vein, who I've actually been speaking to. Um, they have Glasgow as well on the 5th, but we couldn't commit to it again because we just had too much. We wanted to push the Marshall gig. I like you. Um, I just want to say this on the recording. I do like you. You're a good guy. I shouldn't listen to the rest you know, of the band. We're in a group chat without you in it, but I think you're a good guy. Well, you try and get, I mean, learn that the hard way as well, but then you have bands, you try and advise them, and then they just, you know, you know yourself, they're booked, or then you run the corner two weeks before, and it's like, guys, you can only have so many birthday parties a year. Yeah. I was saying this to a, a, a promoter the other day, I was like, you can't have your your birthday party in the solid, but you've also uh, hired Rufus the same night. It's yeah. like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Yeah. yeah they just kind of commit to one and, Push that. Well, absolute fair play, Rob. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. We'll get this um, interview out before the weekend, and uh, we're looking forward to all things Gunpoint X, and especially seeing you on the 19th of October. Um, I raised my Jack Daniels and Coke to you, mate, and uh, I know for a fact it won't be the last time we talk. When the album is ready, we'll do this again, and we'll talk about the album to death and promoting yourselves and whatnot. But um, the article will go on Moshville Times and all the socials, as well as my own socials and stuff like that, and uh, we'll take it from there, buddy. Pleasure, mate. We'll see you in October. You shall. Cheers, buddy.